Hi there, everyone. Welcome back. Pastor Lars Hammer from Lord of Grace Lutheran Church in Marana, Arizona. We're going to continue walking through the Psalms uh, as we're doing as part of our Lenten journey uh, and walking through and finding ways in which the words of the various psalmists can help us through some of the struggles that we're going through in life. And as I've said, I like going through the Psalms because there's not a ton of history and background you need to know, but they are very authentic and very real. And I've discovered as I keep doing this ministry thing, just how authentic and how real they are. Uh, and so I hope maybe illuminate you a little bit, maybe encourage you to dive into this in your own struggles of faith and the things that you're wrestling with. I know right now in COVID, we're all very weary of this. We're tired, uh, we're lonely, we're irritable and cranky. I think the Psalms are a good book to read in a time like this uh, to help have some uh, connection, know that we connect with the ancients and to find ways that we can connect with God in this way. So, Psalm 40, here we go. Uh, we'll start right at the beginning at verse 1. And the title, the title is, it has a title, To the Leader of David, a Psalm. But it has a title to it. So it's, it's David writing a psalm to the leader. And the leader is probably just whoever was the person in charge of leading the congregation of whatever form this took way back when. And I'm leading them in probably singing this in some way. So David's writing this, giving it to the leader. Here he goes. Let's just start with one through three. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. All right. The last Psalm, 39, ended with, and I'm just going to backtrack for a second. It, say, it ends with verse 12 saying, Hear my prayer, O Lord and give ear to my cry. So that's, it ends with a request. He dumps a big lament and makes this request to hear. Now we pick up in 40. Are they, were they originally together or was this one put in afterwards? I don't know. But when you read them right next to each other, it, it works really nicely. It gives you a sense that David was struggling in one, he gives a lament, he opens up, he vents to God, he begs God to, to listen and not blow him off because he just vented. And then we switch to Psalm 40, and he says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he heard my cry. So the good news is, God did listen. God did listen. And not only did God listen to my cry, but what did he do? He drew me up out of the pit. What an interesting image. I love the beautiful images in the Psalms, right? The, the language they use. It drew me up from the desolate pit. Is this a literal pit? I doubt it. I don't think David fell into a dry well. It's, it's a figure of speech, and we all know that. We talk about, uh, maybe use a dated one, being down in the dumps. Uh, you know, we're not literally hanging out at the, at the Marana landfill. Right? What are we saying? We're, we're saying we, we felt like this. We were in a, down in a pit, you know, a place of despair, a place of where it looked like no hope, a place with no light. You can kind of delve into the image a little bit, right? You know, you think of a pit as a place with uh, like this image of the deep hole and maybe the dry well works as an image and the dry well and you're down at the bottom and there's no ladder and you can't see a way out and you can't climb your way out and you feel like you're just stuck, like you're hopelessly stuck and there's nothing you can do in your own power to get out of this thing. You are just stuck. And it's not a pit that's a happy pit. It's not a pit full of, you know, with a three-course buffet. This is a pit that's got nothing. That's how he felt. 
like he was in a desolate pit, like he was in a situation where he didn't see hope and he didn't see a way out of it and he didn't see any other uh, opportunity there. Sort of pure stuck in despair. And then he switches the image again. Out of the miry bog. Okay, so we've gone from no water to now we're stuck. Now, if you've ever been in a bog, and I've walked in bogs, coming from Minnesota, I've walked in bogs. And bogs, uh, bogs, they have water underneath them, but there's a, like a layer of vegetation. Sometimes it can go several feet deep. But it's kind of a, it's, there's kind of a moss and sometimes grasses and stuff and sometimes even trees will grow on them. But they're not solid ground. You're walking, when you're walking, your feet will squish. And, and you can hear the water squishing and you gotta be careful not to step too hard uh, or jump into them because your feet can get stuck in them. And if you, if you jump into it, take a big enough leap and your feet go into it deep enough, you can create kind of a suction effect where you try to pull yourself up and the bog almost feels like it, your foot is stuck in there. And so if you've ever tried walking through a bog, you gotta be careful. But when you get stuck in them, it's hard to pull yourself out because your other foot is also on the bog. So what's your leverage? What do, we, what do you use to pull yourself up with? Well, you better hope there's a tree nearby Maybe there's a, you know, a jack pine or a tamarack or uh, one of those black spruce that's nearby. So maybe you can grab one of those trees, but if you're in the bog and your foot gets stuck and, and you get that suction effect and you don't have a tree, how do you get out of the bog? Someone's gotta pull you out because you don't have the leverage. It's not a situation you can get yourself out of, which seems to be what these two images have in common. You know, they seem so different, but yet they're both about this sense of being stuck and unable to get out by our own power. There's no, there's no pulling yourself up from the bootstraps when you're in the desolate pit and the miry bog. There's no amount of hard work and good decisions and determination and, and go get them that will get you out. There's no amount of inspiration and believing in yourself that will get you out of these situations. You are stuck. It's a total myth that gets propagated in a lot of this prosperity gospel that there is no situation that you cannot, within your own power, overcome with enough combination of optimism and believing in yourself and hard work and, and following certain principles. And they'll even find biblical principles, even good, true biblical principles, and, and they'll tell you that you can get through all these things by following these, but yet you go to the Bible at itself and you got King David. King David, the king who has armies at his command. And he feels like he had gotten himself into a situation where he could not through his own power get out. And if you are the most powerful person in the entire country and you can't pull yourself out, you're stuck. But it also says something about about how kind of life works, right? That we can sometimes buy into too much of the idea that we are individuals capable of solving our own problems. And in America, this is, you know, this is gospel truth, right? That that's what we are about, is pulling ourselves up and being independent individuals. But sometimes as an individual, a lot of times as an individual, you end up in a place where you can't get yourself out of this, where you are in a place where the only way out is someone else to get you out of it, where even the strength, even the strength to pull yourself out, you just don't have. I think of, you know, some examples uh, of this is kind of like, uh, say you're unemployed. Uh, this was just one example that came to me. Say you're unemployed and you need to go get a job and the job search isn't going well. And you keep applying and you keep applying and you keep applying and they, you either get no answer or a, we'll call you, don't call us. 
And you know, you keep getting these answers. Well, what ends up happening? Rejection, 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 rejection. You can start to get into a cycle where you start to think you're unhirable. And so then it affects the way you interview. When you figure out oh, they won't hire me anyways, then you interview differently. But whereas the one person would say, you just have to believe in yourself, I go back to the Psalms and I say, you know what? That's not quite right. Because that energy, that belief, that faith, that confidence to get out of the desolate pit and the miry bog does not come from within ourselves. If we had that within ourselves, we already would have been out. We are social creatures. We are relational creatures. We draw our strength from our connection to others. And if you ever didn't believe that, a year and a half of COVID should have taught us this. That when we are cut off from those relationships, we are weaker. We are not stronger for it. And, and we need someone to give us strength and energy. And that often when we are most confident and most strong, it is because we get that reinforcement from others and we get that feedback from others and we get that validation. And if you don't get that, you can't just make it appear. So much of ourselves does have to do with what we get from those around us. But say you're one of those people, you don't have a good around us. And say you're in that position you are in your own personal desolate pit or miry bog, and you are in that place and you don't have the family, the support network, the friendship group, the life coach, the whatever. You don't have that. How are you gonna get out of that bog? And you're gonna find that the last person listening, the last one hearing your cry, after everybody has left, after everybody else has given up on you, is going to be the Lord God. That the Lord God is still listening to your cry from the depths of the pit when you're not hearing anything good from your friends and nobody else is giving you the support you need. And this is what it says in verse two. Okay, he drew me up from the desolate pit. How did I get out? God pulled me out. I did not do it by my own power. God pulled me out of the pit. God pulled me out of the bog. And where did God put me? On, on a rock. It doesn't say, you know, God made me a rock. God put me on a rock. Instead of being stuck in the sphagnum moss, God pulled me up and put me on a rock and gave me secure footing. And if you've ever walked a long time without secure footing and then you stand on a rock, you, it's, it's, it, it feels it's the greatest feeling in the world, even though it's just a rock. Because your steps are so secure, so safe. I didn't get out, is what the psalmist is saying, by myself. I got out because God pulled me out. And so what am I gonna do now that God pulled me out? I'm gonna sing a new song. I'm gonna sing a new song. I'm not gonna sing the song about despair. I'm not going to sing the song about uh, my rage. I'm going to sing the song of praise to what God has done. And that praise, you will notice, does not just come out of nowhere. It comes from a place of realizing and seeing what God has done first. So it's almost as if you don't really appreciate the solid rock you stand on until you've had your feet stuck. You don't realize how much opportunity God has given you until you've been, uh, until you come out of that pit. And so that's why it's often easier You'll find in, even through all the scriptures, for those who have less and those who've been more on the bottom of society to see the hand of God at work in their lives than those who have money and power and privilege and who can use those things and can feel confident in themselves when in reality their self-confidence really comes from a place of landing in a good place with tons of support. But those who don't have the support understand their frailty and we turn to God. 
or often will turn to God when our overconfidence in our own power, wealth, privilege, abilities, when that doesn't get us what we need and then we face a disappointment, then we realize that God is there with us all along. That's what the psalmist is saying. And he put a new song in my mouth. I've been delivered and I'm gonna sing a new song to God. Not the old song, I'm gonna sing a new song of praise. And many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. So I'm gonna tell my story of how God has pulled me up from the pit. That story is the story that needs to be heard. That story is the story that needs to be told. An authentic faith. Not the, fa not the faith of, I didn't believe, I believed, now everything's better. This is a story of, I, I believed, things got really bad, and I told God to shove it, and then uh, I thought God had abandoned me, and then God actually drew me up even after I told him to shove it. That is an amazing God. That is an amazing God, and I can tell you that for myself that God brings us up out of the pit and the bog, and God does that for us. So, all right. Well, thanks for tuning in today. A little bit more on Psalm 40. We're going to keep going some more on Psalm 40 in the next one. Uh, thanks for listening. Have a great day.